I don't mind front leveling, crowning, and polishing. It's the masking I hate. That's better. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone is doing great, enjoying their weekend. Mine just got a little bit boring, so I decided to come downstairs in the shop and uh, start doing a little bit of work. So one thing that I didn't show was the outcome of putting these frets on and what I had as far as leftovers go. And this little piece right here is what I had left over, not even enough to even do a first fret. But yeah, so that's all the waste that I've got from doing this fret job out of, I think it was like two wires, two strips. Not sure how long those strips were, but yeah, that's it. So that's unfortunately garbage. I can't really do much with it. So, dropped it on the floor. So I picked up a few things. Um, right now I'm gonna do a little bit of an un unbagging. This is gonna be for uh, some electronics for this guitar. I ended up reaching out uh, on eBay to one of the guys that I order shit from and here is a brand new output jack for this guitar. The old one is in kind of eh, iffy shape. I don't know if I'm going to trust it or not. This one is switched so when you plug it in uh, it should activate the humbucker pickup which is an EMG USA 81 and uh, yeah so Anytime you have active pickups or active equalizer inside of your guitars, uh, make sure you unplug them because it will drain the battery if you're not using it. So that's one thing. Another thing I ended up picking up, another box of the glaze coating. Yeah, this stuff is great. I love it. Uh, I've been using it. Uh, Shit, I think the, the first guitar I used it on was what? The Angel guitar? No, before that. Yeah, um, this stuff is great. It works really good. Uh, does not dry very quick, but it will set up pretty quick. But uh, yeah, great stuff. So I picked this up and uh, I still have some of the two bottles I have. Another thing I ended up picking up was I, I've went to a bunch of different places to try to find the same fluorescent pink paint uh, for this guitar because I started running low on it um, and I couldn't find it. So I had to pick up Martha Stewart's yeah, neon, it's paint and primer, uh, fast drying, indoor and outdoor. and. Uh, so from what I looked up on this, it actually works pretty decently. It's not a bad paint. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to sand the headstock down again uh, because you could, don't ever try to match colors from one paint manufacturer to another. They're always going to be somewhat different. If you don't notice it, somebody else might. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to end up doing is re-sanding this headstock down and respraying it with the Martha Stewart. So I read the instructions on this and everything else, and it's basically the same thing as any other type of a spray paint. Um, the only thing is, is that, uh, yeah, it's not the same paint that I was using. So I picked up a bunch of cans of this. And right now, I want to go to town doing the crowning on this. So here we go.
None like watching a job get done in real time. So all I'm looking for on these frets is just a nice center line, straight and even from one end of the fret to the other end of the fret. What I'm using is the Stumac, and there is no number on this, but it's a three-sided file. The edges are smoothing out, so it doesn't cut into the fretboard. Great tool, I love it, and it's basically my go-to tool when I'm doing any type of a crowning on any frets, and uh, it just works out pretty good. So let's clean this up for a little bit. All right, so I had to reorganize my H. Roar Kennedy toolbox a couple weeks ago. I ended up accumulating so many tools for guitar-related repairs and stuff that I had no place to put them. And throwing them all in one drawer just turns into a big clusterfuck. So I don't know if ADD kicked in or what. But now I have separate drawers for separate things for the guitar. Like one drawer is strictly neck, fret, uh, nut related. The other drawer is other tools like Allen's, Allen keys, um, action height gauges, radius gauges, uh, just everything else, which some of them are some pretty small tools that, uh, you know, you don't want to lose, especially when, you know, adjusting a Floyd Rose for the intonation, you know, there's special tools that are, make it a lot easier to do the job. And, when it makes it a lot easier to do the job, it doesn't mean that you're cutting corners to get something done uh, and not doing it the right way. It's just that it's more uh, efficient. Less time to do something, the job still gets done, and it still looks like you spent hours doing it. Well, maybe 10 more minutes than what you would have. But right now, I had to hunt down my fret erasers because I forgot what drawer I put them in and uh, couldn't find them. So I found them. Now, fret erasers, some people will say that, well, it's not the same thing as using sandpaper and going through the different steps of sandpaper to get the same results as uh, a nice smooth fret. Actually, it works out the same way, just a little bit easier. Well, a lot easier and less uh, less finger problems or hand problems when doing it. It's not like you're holding a small piece of paper and kind of going over the fret. I used to do that and my fingers would start hurting. You know, my, my joints would start hurting and it's the amount of pressure for so long, length, long of a time for uh, the length of time that you're doing it. What's well, kind of, you know, making your hands a little stiff and stuff. These guys here made it a lot easier to do. Now, instead of using like five different pieces of sandpaper from uh, a, a coarser grit to a much, 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 much milder grit to end up polishing these guys out so the way they look like a chrome finish. The front erasers do the same thing and there's only three of them. So again, in real time, I'm going to go over this whole fretboard so you can see how long it takes to polish out a fret. Now, I just went over these guys with a file. So it's, you know, you would think it's going to take a long time to smooth these guys out and stuff. Just wait. So right now, I don't need the 400 and I don't need the 1000. What I need is the 180 grit. The 180, you can see I've been using this thing quite a bit because it's all angled and stuff. So the 180 grit is gonna go to town and start, uh, start the process of polishing.
So that was the 180 grit. Don't need that no more. Now we are going to go with the 400 grit. You can see. Now these little notches that I kind of carved into them from doing fret uh, polishing works out pretty good because it kind of wraps itself around the fret instead of just doing the top of the fret. This is a perfect time to kind of inspect your frets. Can you see how well the sandpaper or the fret erasers did? And if you see any scratches on top of the fret still from the leveling part, you can kind of go over them and fix them. So far, so good. This also does a thing too where if you get on the edge of the fret too as you're going with the racer, it also knocks down how sharp they are as well. That's why I like using them. So now I'm going to go with the 1000 grit and see like this finger here usually just takes a beating from doing this because it's just pushing down on the uh, eraser.
And it gets the job done fairly well. Next will be the actual polishing part of it. And again, I'm cheating a little bit by using a Dremel. All right, so this part of polishing, you want to make sure that your area on your fretboard and your frets are clean of any metal shavings, little pieces uh, of metal, any type of debris on them because if it gets inside of your polishing pad for polishing your frets, it's gonna scratch the shit out of your fret. So what I'm using here is just some good old mother's mag and aluminum polish and it worked, this shit works pretty damn good. So that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna start putting some on the frets. So I don't need no more than that. Put this away. Now what's nice about my Dremel is, is that I have a attachment for it. It's kind of like a pencil and this really works good from for being nice and flat and not having the actual Dremel in the way and having to go on an angle. You see I use this quite often for polishing frets by how black it is and I will continue. This works very well. A lot of people will not really care for using the Dremel. I personally didn't care for it myself. Same thing with the fret erasers until I started using them and got the hang of it. Now it seems like this is all I use and it just gets done a lot easier. So here we go.
as you can see it gets the job down very very well all right so the one thing that's on this fretboard that I gotta fix is where there was some tang sprout where the frets kind of like start going this way a little bit as uh, the wood expanded and contracted so when I did the sanding on the fretboard and on the edges over here because this is going to get a clear on it uh, it removed the fill that was in a couple of these there's one here, there's one here um, yeah I think that's that's it so the way I'm going to do that is I, I kind of save some of these bottles of you know old medications and shit like that. So this one here, I have binding dust inside of it. So anytime I have to fix a binding issue or a problem or a crack, and this one I have rosewood dust inside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of rosewood dust on the, the little split that's right there. You almost not even see it, but a little bit of rosewood dust and a little bit of crazy glue on that, and that will go away. So as I look down this neck, all the frets all kind of go into each other with no problem nice just the way I want it alright so this razor blade here as you can see it's kind of spooned a little bit it's not very sharp of a razor blade but this will work pretty good for scooping out a little bit of the rosewood dust and kind of put it on this area here so what I need to do is I need to pry this thing to stand up like this a little bit so what do I have that I can use to do that with? Um, let's see here. Well, I guess I can kind of use this as a holder. That works out pretty good. So when doing this, you don't want to use a lot of glue, but just enough to kind of put inside there. So what I want to do is I need one of my tips. So I got one of these tips. I need to trim this down a little bit. That'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and get my glue prepared and ready. These things are nice. All right. So what I want to do is I want to fill in that spot with a little bit of rosewood dust. Without wasting a lot of it. And I need another razor blade. This will work out. And of course I have my glasses on because I am half blind. So I'm going to pack that in a little bit, smooth it out. Try not to get any of it on the fret itself. Clean off the extra that I don't need. Just add a very tiny bit of glue to it, not much at all. That's it. If I get a little bit on the fretboard, I can get clean that up, not a big deal. Now for the one that I saw here same thing pack that in a little bit and when I do the sanding that'll go away see now I came in I can't tell where I did it
dry. There's a little one over here. I saw another one someplace else. I could fill that one in right there. So when the glue sets up, I just go over it with a piece of sandpaper and it'll take care of that. Is there any on the other side that I need to work on? Uh, the other side looks fine. Alright, so I don't have to worry about any of that. All the frets are nice and even with the fretboard. Nobody is standing upright. Oh, well, not standing upright. So another good check is this. This should play really nice for Wally. -E. Yeah, this is good. I'm not worried about the rest of it. All right, so don't waste this stuff. That's it for now. I'm pretty much done with the this part of the neck other than sanding a little bit. Now, if you get a little bit of crazy glue on your fretboard, all right, there's a trick of removing it. A little bit of acetone. A little bit of acetone on a rag will get rid of the glue that is on your fretboard real close to the frets. Just be very careful not to saturate the rag with acetone to where it's going to leave a puddle on your fretboard when you wipe it. That could seep into where the glue is on your fret and kind of like soften that up a little bit and cause you problems with that fret and also the inlays binding anything that's on a fretboard that uh, uh, is a plastic base or you know most of these mother of toilet seat inlays you know they're, they're not really mother or pearl they're some type of a composite plastic and it will break those down it will melt it binding same way so the whole purpose of, of doing this video this way as far as making it uh, in real time so you can see how long the job takes, what it consists of to get the job done, and to be able to conquer this job yourself. It's not very hard. If you are mechanically inclined and you have the tools to do the job and do the job the right way, go to it. Don't be afraid of it don't let it discourage you if you find that you are making a lot of mistakes or if you find that it's it's aggravating for you then leave it up to you know, a professional or somebody who knows what they're doing as far as working on guitars go you don't want to ruin something that it was very expensive you don't want to ruin something that is your only guitar that you have uh, I would say go online you can get cheap necks on the internet a lot of them need uh, uh, brand new, even brand new necks to cheap ones that are from China or whatever those necks there usually they have problems which either they need to be leveled or something's going on with the neck themselves that needs to be worked on and you could practice with that 
you know, instead of taking on the job and, uh, on your guitar, that's the only guitar that you have. And now next thing you know, you know, it needs new frets now because of how or what you ended up doing. So taking these things off, you want to be very, very careful because if there's any stuff inside the tube itself, any glue inside the tube itself, you could squeeze it and squirt it out. And then make sure you lock and put your cap back on there and lock it down. So don't be afraid of this. If it gets aggravating towards you for you to do the job and, and you want to give up right away, uh, don't aggravate yourself. Find somebody who is a luthier or knows how to work on guitars the right way. Don't just follow anybody's video that's out there as far as what they have done, especially if they don't show the work that they've done, only show the disaster after they've done it. So be careful who you follow on YouTube or any other social media as far as that goes. And be careful who you listen to uh, in discussions as far as talking about guitars and guitar repair and restoration and refinishing or restoring. So be careful who you, you follow. The wrong information is going to set you back. The information that is out there uh, could very well, very well be misleading and cause you a big headache. All right, so the next thing on this thing here is just to do some more sanding and to take care of this headstock to get the other paint on it. Such a shame, too, because the headstock came out really nice. What can you do? I don't want to mix and match, try to mix and match different paints um, and have a headstock different color from the body. That's just not going to work. You guys take care. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something and... Uh, Rock on.